The fourth largest of the Great Lakes, Lake Erie borders the Canadian province of Ontario in four U.S. states, including Ohio. It's a vital resource for Ohioans, spanning 312 miles along the state's coast from Toledo all the way to the city of Conneaut in Ashtabula County. Year after year, it's a resource our audience identifies as one of the community's leading assets. That's according to IdeaStream's Listening Project survey. But Lake Erie also faces increasing threats from invasive species to water quality. 12 million people live in the Lake Erie watershed, and the lake provides drinking water for about 11 million of them, including 3 million Ohioans, according to the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. In 2014, a toxic algae bloom shut down Toledo's water supply for three days, and the green algae that engulfed the western half of Lake Erie in 2015 was the most severe bloom since aerial measurements began in 2002. Officials expect this summer's bloom to be the third or fourth largest in size. Loren County traffic, Sport Star 319er, Sierra Victor departing runway 7. There's a renewed effort to monitor the problem by a group of citizen scientists, private pilots and researchers who collect and analyze data. Dr. Rafat Ansari, a senior scientist at NASA Glenn Research Center, spearheads the initiative, along with pilot Terry Schubert. GPS-enabled cameras are mounted along the underside of the aircraft's wings, snapping infrared and color images while pilots fly along the coastline. The hope? To alert communities of harmful algal blooms early and contribute to the evidence needed to combat the issue. And here to help us learn more about the Citizen Science Initiative and give us some insight into some of the images they've captured while flying over Lake Erie are Dr. Rafat Ansari and Terry Schubert. Gentlemen, welcome to Ideas. Thank you, thank you. So Dr. Ansari, you're a scientist at NASA specializing in biomedical optics, and Terry, you're a retired teacher. So how did you both come, become interested in becoming citizen scientists and the initiative? <laughs> Don't all speak at once. We'll have a duel here. <laughs> Actually, both of us were flying, and we were based out of Lorain County Airport on the west side of Cleveland. We both ended up in the same hangar together, so by virtue of becoming hangar mates, we developed a relationship, and Dr. Ansari explained a little bit about his idea and his project, and it sounded like a great way to pay back into our community things that we have, are able to do that other people are, are not able to do. And how about you, Dr. Ansari? Yes, I think uh, Terry has already elaborated on that. I think uh, I was looking at Lake Erie in 2011 when I was flying with my wife from Chicago to Cleveland and I noticed a lot of green colors. In fact, she's the one who noticed that. And when I looked down and I said, wow, I mean, I, I've never seen that before. Came down and found out that the water was toxic there because mm -hmm. the beaches were closed. Mm -hmm. And then after landing, and then I think fast forward that to 2013, I was invited to give a talk on something else at NASA and met there with a project scientist who was working on algal bloom. And they were doing you know, imaging with hyperspectral imaging. And that's how we start to learn about it. And I said, well, something we can do about it using general aviation airplanes. We are about 600,000 pilots out there and 200,000 airplanes. And if we can form a network of these flying over uh, Lake, not only Lake Erie, but over affected waterways throughout the country, then we can have some very nice data to share with everybody else free of charge and that's what we can do. Yeah. So that's how it all started. It's such an interesting initiative. So let's talk about how long have you guys been tracking these, these algal blooms? So we started the project in 2014 and so it has been three years that we have been uh, uh, tracking algal blooms. And so what type of images are you recording each time you guys go up? So every time we go up we have two cameras, in fact we have three cameras. So two cameras that we use in the nadir position, which is looking exactly 90 degrees down below uh, underneath the wing. So one is the RGB, regular red, green, blue spectrum. Mm -hmm. Another one is the near infrared. The near infrared gives you information about the health of vegetation. So in this case, it, it can tell you the intensity of that bloom down below. And there's another camera which looks in the forward direction and it gives you a perspective of what is going on in a longer distance, okay? Mm -hmm. Our resolutions are very good, about 1.3 feet per pixel, which is much better than any other assets out there. So this gives also information, and if we don't see, uh, if we see foam and streaks of foams, then that's also an indication of toxicity in the water. Mm -hmm. And we can also see the scum, and if there's a floating scum, that means it is cyanobacteria in our water system here. 
So just real fast, we do have some stills of, of some of the pictures that you've taken when you guys have been up, but how quickly do these blooms change and, and how often are you monitoring them? So, so the blooms are very active, okay? It's a very dynamic system. It could take a few hours to days to weeks to months, okay? It depends on the uh, environmental factors about the wind and the air and all this stuff. And this is a picture you took back in August? Uh, this is the picture, I think, uh, the Terry, you right. imagine that? Uh, this was taken of the uh, uh, Toledo crib where they take the inlet for Toledo's water supply. It's uh, about seven or eight miles away from, Cle or from uh, Toledo. And uh, mm. this is just one of the little um, islands that are closer to Toledo. And it, it depicts some of the uh, floating scum that's out there. And was this picture, were those two pictures taken one day after each other? Uh, I think these are probably at the same time, uh, with, within five minutes of each other. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, we take pictures uh, one shot every five seconds and a typical uh, run will, will shoot about 1,500 images. So, so I would like to correct you on that one a little bit very quickly because the very first picture that you saw was taken the same day, uh, and I'm sorry, one day before, okay, okay. because that was the 8th of August when your crew flew with us, mm -hmm. and the next picture a day after. And the first picture you see there showing you the foamy streaks, and there is also in the second picture, you will notice there are boats out there. That's a professor from Toledo. Mm -hmm. He is a student who is collecting data. And there you can learn that it took these, uh, they were modeling the, the bloom. And they can tell you that in the nighttime, on the, in the early morning hours, the bloom goes, uh, the bacteria goes to the top surface, and then it goes down. So that second picture shows you that uh, is scum, and that's a very serious issue. It is, and so, I mean, you guys are volunteering your time, so why did you guys want to become citizen scientists? So if anyone would have told me about a few years ago what citizen science is, I would not have known. Mm -hmm. I'm a professional scientist working in NASA for about close to 30 years now, mm -hmm. and that's not what I do for a living. But after looking in 2011, we thought we could do something about this. And then also, as long as NASA is concerned, they had a program in citizen science. Okay, so we become a little bit part of that, but they do not pay for flying or any of that. Mm -hmm. That's all done in our own time. Mm -hmm. And the reason to do it, because I think it makes sense to supply this data to all the agencies. I'm very pleased to tell that all the governmental and non-governmental agencies here in Ohio are now requesting us to provide this data for them in a timely manner. And that's what we are doing right, right. now. Right, and Terry, real fast, we're running out of time. Why did you decide to do it? Uh, just an opportunity to fly, which I enjoy, and also pay back to a community that's been so good to me. All right. Well, Scientists need data, and we can provide it. Well, Terry Schubert and Dr. Rafat Ansari, thank you so much for the great work that you're doing, and thanks for coming on Ideas today. Thank, thank you. you for having us.